Hey y'all, it's Abby Aslan and welcome back to my channel. If you have not seen my face before, um, I post videos every Monday and Friday based on lifestyle and college type of things. And today's video is going to be one that was requested by a couple of you guys. Um, you all wanted some ACT tips for the tests and I know that it is not really the prime season of taking the ACT, but I know when I was a junior, I was starting to study around this time. And then I know when I was a senior, I was really just buckling down and trying to get my top score at this point. So I just figured this would be a good time to post it. I really feel like I mastered the art of studying for the ACT because I took it four times and I studied pretty hard each time. Um, and I know which books worked best for me and I know that everything is different for different people. But basically the tips I'm gonna give you are gonna be the tips that worked for me when I was studying and taking the test. So for a little bit of background information, I took the ACT four times. Um, the first time I took it was February of my junior year and then I took it again in April, and then I took it in June, I believe, and then in September. So those are the four times I took it. First time I got a 26, second time I got a 27, third time I got a 30, and fourth time I got a 32, and I believe my super score was a 33. But I know that my score did increase a lot over time, but um, I don't really think it was because of how, of the amount of time I spent studying. I definitely think it had more to do with familiarization and getting used to the test and really figuring out um, efficient ways to study. So that was my whole process with the ACT and I just wanted to share that with you guys so you, I would have a little bit of credibility when I'm giving this advice to you. So first off, I just wanna let you all know what my favorite books were whenever I was studying for the ACT. I used three or four different ones, I believe, but two of them really, really stood out to me and it was the Barron's AT ACT 36 book and I will leave them linked down below so you all can check them out. And then the Princeton Review, um, ACT book and the Princeton Review one was like this big and it had like five practice tests in it and it was awesome. Um, they were both great for different reasons. I love the ACT 36 one for English and science I believe specifically. I believe that the rules and the English one that they like went over and the way they explained it was just very simple and just like I understood everything with it really well. The Princeton Review book was so great because I felt like it was really so so similar to the test itself and it really just was like taking the actual test I felt like um, and the practice tests were awesome especially since there are five full length ones in there and I really just felt like all the material in it was useful and relevant. So as far as studying tips go, um, basically what I did is took notes and reviewed each of the subjects as I would read through a practice book. This is kind of what I did the first time around, I did it once and then I didn't do it again. Um, basically I would just review the subjects and I made flashcards for certain rules for math um, and then the rules for English and I would just study them to where they became um, embedded in my memory and I would know the rules for grammar and English and know the math formulas I needed to know that I hadn't done in years and that really helped just to really um, refresh my memory for those few questions you would have that were based off of rules. This is like my number one um, tip and the tried and true way I guess I used for studying for the ACT. My brother actually was the one who um, kind of made me do it this way and he basically told me to just take a full practice test like throughout like the whole English math reading science and take it in that order in like a mock test environment so like I didn't have my phone on me um, I just like sat at my desk and I took a full test all the way through I mocked like the break I mocked like literally everything and did it just how the actual test would be I took the test all the way through and I had someone time me when you take the test all the way through and then you go back and grade the test um, look at what answers you got wrong and then on like a little sticky note or a piece of paper or something write down like the type of question it was like write down like reading this number like one three and seven or something like that and then figure out which type of question they are typically in the practice test um that you have in your books it'll tell you what kind of like question it is like what it relates to specifically if it's a math like i might say algebra or geometry or trigonometry or something and it'll let you know like what kind of question you're missing and you can kind of see you're missing the same exact type of question over and over again or if you're missing a variety of different questions and it's really helpful to just keep note of the exact questions you did miss and then what kind of questions they were for each section and then after you write those down on sticky notes go in the um, answers and look at the explanations for why you missed them and make sure you truly understand why you missed them like go and look back at the rule it's referring to if it's like in English or something like that it's just really important to figure out why the correct answer is the correct answer um, whenever you're missing questions. I think that helped me so much whenever 
we went through and saw which questions I was missing. I was missing literally the same type of questions in reading and the same type of questions in math. And then when I went back and looked at the explanations for the answers, I like realized what I was doing wrong and like why I was getting those answers wrong and it really, really helped a lot. Next, once you've gone through everything you've missed on each section, assess which um, sections are your strongest and your weakest. Um, just kind of figure out which ones you have the higher or lower scores on and then that'll help you for practicing later on in the week. Based on what you were strongest and weakest at, I would say the whole week before the ACT, um, take the practice test over and over again. Like if you were weaker in math and then stronger in English, maybe take one English test like a week before the test and then take one either the night before or two nights before the test. But then if you're worse at math and it's just like one of your weaker subjects, take two to three to four of that test during the week and you don't have to like take the whole test over again. Just take just a math practice test or just an English practice test depending on what you're stronger or weaker at. If you're stronger at something, I suggest doing one earlier in the week and then one towards the end of the week to kind of refresh your mind. And then if you're weaker at something, I just suggest doing it as much as you can before you get burnt out. So don't overdo it, but don't only do it once the week before. I took a lot of practice tests for science the week before and a lot of practice tests for reading, I believe, because they were my two um, weaker subjects. And it was really important for me to just take multiple science tests. I believe I took three or four um, in the period of time of a week before the test. Just record your improvement, like keep writing down the scores you get and then keep going back and looking at the um, correct answers and why those answers are the right answers, um, like I said earlier. And then now I'm gonna move on to actual test tips. Um, that was all of my studying tips, like how I studied for the ACT and it worked best for me that way. And that's what I did for my last two ACTs I took. And it clearly worked the best because I was able to get better scores with them. And then now I'm gonna just go into test tips for the actual test and the night before the test. So the night before a test, um, everyone says don't take like any practice tests, don't study, like don't look at anything the night before the test because they think it'll just like burn you out or whatever. And I don't really think that's necessarily true for everyone. For some people it might be. For me, if I just like looked over something that um, had been giving me trouble throughout the week and just kind of refreshed my memory on it, it really helped to do that for only like an hour the night before. I don't suggest like studying for like three or four hours or anything crazy like that the night before the test. But definitely if you just take 30 minutes to an hour to just review something that you need to go over or maybe take one more practice test of the subject you're weakest in, it might help you a lot in the long run if you really feel that you need it. During the test, it's super duper important to stay focused during each section. Don't be thinking about the past section and how hard it was or how easy it was. Don't be thinking about reading next and that you're gonna have a really hard time with it. Just think about the test you are taking right then and there. Like if you're doing the math test, just focus on math and like don't let your mind wander anywhere else. I know it can be really, really hard, but if you just focus on the paper that's in front of you, then you'll do a lot better. I think the most important thing with ACT, and this is honestly what made the biggest difference in my score, it, what, it's what brought me to a 30 and a 32 rather than like a mid 20 or higher 20. Um, the most important thing to me is definitely actually finishing every section of the test and not having to randomly bubble in a couple in the last couple seconds. The first two times I took the test, I didn't finish one or two of the sections and I would just have to like randomly bubble in the last three or four answers right before time was called. And you don't realize that but those three or four answers make a huge difference in your score. And then my last two tests, I actually finished every single section. I was able to read every single question and answer and actually get an answer for everything. And it made the biggest difference in my scores um, across the board, my overall score and my individual scores. So when you're studying, keep that in mind. Um, I would just keep studying to where you're getting used to the test and you're able to finish all of the sections in the allotted time you have. Now I'm just gonna give you all tips for each section. Um, these are gonna be based off of what I personally feel worked best for me. Um, these may not work best for you, but it's something to try out for sure if you are taking the ACT and have never taken it before, or if you're just looking for a different method to use while taking it. So for English, I found it worked best if I just skimmed the story and did the questions as I went. I would never just like read the whole story and then go answer the questions. Um, and don't overthink anything. Usually the simplest answers on English are the right answers. So like if there's like a ton of punctuation in an answer or a ton of like very formal grammar or words, chances are it's probably not the right answer. Same thing if it's like a super lengthy answer, like if you're replacing a sentence or something, chances are it's not the right answer. I remember reading in one of my practice books that like 
the simplest answer is usually the right one and I totally agree with that and watch for repetition like the HG will really get you and like they will like use a sentence that sounds like really good and fancy but then if you like truly look at it two of the words next to each other may mean the exact same thing so definitely watch for repetition and questions and answers for math I don't really have many tips um math was like my low ended up being my lowest like sub score and I don't really know why because math has always been one of my stronger subjects but it is what it is and personally for me for math um, I would just get really burnt out in the last like 10 questions and it'd be really hard for me to go through with all of them. Try not to like skip around in the math section. Um, for me personally, it worked best if I just worked all the way through. Um, I didn't have any like special tactics to where I like worked into front or anything like that. Um, and just make logical guesses on math like um, if you're gonna guess something, see if you can like plug the answer in or something like that. Reading gave me a really hard time because I thought it was ridiculous that you were only given like a really short amount of time for so many passages and so many questions and once I ended up mastering reading and being able to answer everything and read everything I felt way way better about it and it ended up being one of my higher scores for reading I just suggest skimming but skimming with recognition do not read for thorough comp comprehension like oh my gosh you will be digging yourself in a very deep hole if you sit there and read the stories for thorough comprehension unless you are extremely fast at answering questions. Don't skim just to say you read it. Just whenever you're reading, just kind of like make sure your mind and your eyes are like focused on what you're reading because then your eyes will remember kind of where certain words were at and they'll use those words in the question and you'll be able to be like, oh, I remember that being in this paragraph. Um, so it's definitely just really important to just skim over everything. Don't read it thoroughly. Um, just get a good general understanding of like what the plot and the theme is and then just go on and answer the questions in order. Science, I had a really really hard time figuring out how I wanted to take that whole section. I could never figure out if I wanted to sit there and thoroughly like read over the experiment going on and read over what was going on and like get a good understanding of everything going on and then quickly answer all the questions or if I just wanted to skim through it really fast and then answer the questions and I ended up finding that skimming through it very quickly and then doing the questions and spending a little bit more time on the questions is what worked best for me. Answer the questions after each passage. I don't suggest reading through everything and then answering all the questions. Just like read passage one, answer the questions for passage one, and then so on. Don't make it complicated for science. Most of the answers are either in the passage or can be inferred from the passage. I would just suggest whenever you're doing the science section, whenever you're reading over everything and like skimming it really quickly, just quickly underline any like important information. Like it may like say something about like the purpose of the experiment or something like that. But just underline what you think is important and just remember that most of the answers are either in the passage itself or can be inferred by putting uh, two and two together. Overall, another big tip, and this is, it may be different for some of y'all, so don't like come at me screaming that this is what works for you. Overall, just don't look at the questions first and then um, ans and then read everything and then answer. That wastes so, so much time in my opinion. I think I did that the first test. I would like go and look at the questions for reading and then read everything and then answer the questions because they say that like if you kind of know what they're going to ask then it kind of helps you whenever you're reading but it ends up just wasting time because you end up forgetting what the questions were asking anyways so i think it's best to just go ahead and read what's in front of you and then answer the questions blindly and that's personally what worked best for me i hope this video was super duper helpful for you all i know some of y'all have been requesting it and i know i really wanted to film it since i feel like after taking the ACT four times, I got a lot of um, knowledge on studying it and just figured it out really well. So definitely give this a thumbs up if it did help y'all. Send it to your friends that are going to be taking the ACT. I'm just wanting to help as many of y'all as I can because I know it's a very, very stressful test. And for any of you that are going to be taking it or are taking it for the first time or just have to keep on taking it, best of luck to you all. I know y'all can do it. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching.